three wire level notes. We're going to do a quick run through of the formatting and math for three wire level notes. Notice the standard heading line is already input for us. Station, a backsight plus column, a distance calculation column, foresight minus, distance calculation again, and elevation. Three wire level notes have a nice linear setup in which the elevation is on the same line as the station it refers to. Okay, let's make our first backside observation. Top, middle, and bottom. You'll notice that observations are being recorded to the thousandth. Since there are no thousandth markings on a standard level rod, where do these come from? Well, when we take a rod reading, we can easily see that our level and stadia lines fall in between the hundredth marks, right? So we have our feet in red, tenths in black, and the black and white tick marks represent the hundredths. Rather than rounding to a flat hundredth and losing potential accuracy, we estimate the thousandths by observing the position of the line in between each hundredth tick and make a best guess. Estimating in this way may not sound like an accuracy method to you, but your best guess is likely within one to two thousandths of the actual reading, whereas rounding can introduce up to five thousandths of inaccuracy, making your estimate the best method. Next, we'll take the sum of your three readings and divide it by three to come up with our averaged backside reading. Okay, now let's calculate distance by taking the top reading and subtracting the middle reading and multiplying it by 100. Next, we'll take the middle reading and subtract the bottom reading and multiply that by 100. Adding the two together gives you your distance from the level to the rod at the backside, 170.0 feet. Let's take our foresight reading, top, middle, bottom, sum of the three divided by three is the averaged foresight reading. Okay, now the distance calcs. Top minus middle times 100, middle minus bottom times 100, add them together, that's 180.1 feet from the level to the rod at the foresight. That foresight data was looking ahead at station 103, and just like station 101 had the elevation written across from it on the same line, to do the same for 103, we're going to take the averaged backsight, or the backsight plus, add it to the elevation for 101 to get our height of instrument at the level, then subtract our foresight minus to come down to the ground and establish the elevation at 103. Notice that after each station line, you have five additional lines of data before the next station. Now that we see how one line of data fits in the notes, let's pre-plan our next observation to station 104. Five spaces, boom. You know the drill now, right? Backside readings, backside average, distance calcs, foresight readings, foresight average. Hey, want to know why three-wire leveling is so great? You have two independent back check systems running for every observation. First, your average reading should be close to your middle reading at the level line. That's an easy visual check, isn't it? But what if they're not close? How do you know which of the readings introduced error into that average? Or how bad the error is? Your distance calculation column is the second check. When you take the top and subtract the middle, and take the middle and subtract the bottom, theoretically, those two numbers should be exactly the same. Because the distance between the top and middle, and middle and bottom crosshairs, is exactly the same. Notice that 67.0 and 66.9 differ by 0.1. Since you multiplied the crosshair reading differences by 100, that means that the actual readings only differed by 1,000th. If the two numbers in the distance column differ by, let's say, 3 tenths, that means the readings in the observation column, top middle to middle bottom, differed from each other by 3 thousandths, and so on. I know we're estimating the thousandths, but if I didn't do better than 3 thousandths, or I see more than a 3 tenths difference in the distance column, I'll recheck my readings and I can usually spot my observation error, at which point I'll strike through, not erase, and jot down the correct reading. Okay, back to it. Distance calcs on the foresight, run the math to get the elevation for 104, skip five spaces, and let's close this level loop back to our start point at 101. Backsight, foresight, math. All right, comparing the start elevation at 101 to our closing elevation, we're off only 1,000th. I'll write that down in my notes to show the results clearly. Finally, we're going to do a quick error check summary. Now, this isn't a level loop closure adjustment. Actually, we'll be covering that in a subsequent video. First, I'll jot down the start elevation. 
Next, I'm going to take the sum of all of my positive backside averages directly from the backside plus column. Next, I'll take the sum of all my negative foresight averaged readings directly from the foresight minus column. I'll run that math from our start elevation, and I should get the same closure results. One thousandth. Perfect. All this error check does is ensure that when you transferred the averaged readings to the elevation column to run your math, you didn't transpose any numbers. So now you've compared the math from the elevation column to your backsight and foresight averaged columns independently, and your math has been backchecked and verified. Okay, let's complete this set of notes with our task and job name in the top margin on the left, date and the crew performing the work, and a page number on the right. That's a wrap. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content, click that subscribe button for more.